Hello, good morning. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the European markets for trading session the uh, Wednesday, 14th of uh, February 2018. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal. Signals and market updates from leading private providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app by the Google Play and the Apple App Store. Okay, so that's basically where we stand, folks. Okay, uh, in terms of the uh, market stats, let's see where we are. Uh, in terms of uh, Asian markets overnight, let's just quickly run through the stats and in terms of US markets as well yesterday. We had a strong close in US equities, NASDAQ moving higher and S&P moving higher, Dow moving higher, which in turn obviously has triggered this gap fill, or should we say gap higher in European equities, which was more or less expected given the fact that we had strength in the UK, US session. Overnight in the Asian session now, um, uh, the Hang Seng up almost 2.3%, uh, Shanghai up 1%. But the Nikkei still continues to lag. So there is a uh, cause for concern there. Oil prices certainly wilting as well on the back of supply data. So again, that's another cause for concern. We're dropping back down to 58 again. Okay, if I bring up the price of oil here, bear with me. Okay, so light crude certainly going back down to those lows. So certainly isn't a good sign going forward, especially for the European indices and obviously US indices as well. I know we've potentially put in a base at 58, so we'll see. Uh, we could certainly move even lower on the daily chart. Let's just have a look here. This is a key, obviously, support zone. If that breaks, then we're going back down to 55, which isn't good at all, especially after having hit 66, 67. Uh, the uh, price of oil is down almost $7 a barrel. So that certainly doesn't bode well for the commodity sector. Okay, now in terms of um, European stats, then this morning, FTSE up 50 points. Impressive. German DAX up 107 and French CAC up 40. So European indices certainly, uh, we see benefiting from the strength in uh, in China and obviously the US. In terms of economic data this morning, we've got uh, GDP numbers from uh, Germany coming in more or less in line, CPI data as well, certain coming in line as well. Uh, we have had a potential report from Germany indicating that they are seeing strength and continue to see strength. Uh, we'll deepen interest rate exchange rate reform China central bank keep that basic stable. Okay, so yes, yeah, so looking at Germany, strong sentiment indicators demand from abroad from German industrial goods to just start. Uh, so yeah, start for Germany economy into in 2018. So certainly a bullish potential picture there in terms of Germany. Let's see if that strength can obviously continue. In terms of, um, uh, like I said, commodities, copper prices certainly moving higher, but oil prices certainly moving lower, which in turn is obviously risk negative. In terms of uh, the rest of the day, you've got GDP numbers coming out from Europe, industrial data coming out as well. We've got Mr. Mersh speaking, uh, so that'll be interesting. Retail sales from the US, CPI data as well, so dollar sensitive data coming out later on. Let's see where we are technically now in terms of the markets. German DAX still remains weak, folks. I mean, look at the, the NASDAQ certainly has rallied back up to 6600, yet the German DAX remains weak. That's not a good sign, okay? Now, obviously, that certain that impact is being felt due to Merkel. Uh, given the fact that she's conceded uh, a lot of her power and her clout. Um, now, again, can it, uh, latest article here, Financial Times, uh, has not yet formally begun a fourth term as German Chancellor, but already many in her party are openly sketching out a po post-Merkel error. Ch Chancellor is facing a huge internal backlash over the coalition deal. She negotiated with Social Democrats last week and in particular decision to give them the finance ministry, longer CDU bastion. So that certainly isn't good. Uh, a lot of uncertainty certainly is causing, a, 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 obviously, risk aversion there. Suddenly, Conservative Christian Democrats are saying the unsable that the party must consider a replacement with Miss Merkel, the woman who has led Germany for 12 years in a party for 18, and the sooner the better. Reading the CDU will start thinking right now about a new lineup. So, again, uh, any potential uncertainty, especially given the fact that Miss Merkel has been the head there, isn't good for, doesn't bode well for Germany. And that's why you're seeing weakness in the German DAX. Look at that. Uh, if I bring up the NASDAQ, uh, just give you a NASDAQ here. I mean, just look at Shanghai, really. Look at the bounce that we've seen. Okay, quite impressive there. Bring up the. Um, Nasdaq as well. I bring up the Dow. I mean, look at the the bounce in the Dow. We've from twenty three three hundred now we're up to twenty four, almost a fourteen hundred point bounce in the Dow. Now the Nasdaq and the um, and the German DAX are, are intertwined. Their fate is intertwined. Uh, the German the Nasdaq is certainly coming back up up to six six ninety five, retesting that uh, obviously resistance zone, uh, and you can see that we've bounced almost from six one fifty up to six seven hundred now. Okay. I mean, you've had almost a 500-point rally in the Nasdaq whilst the German DAX. I mean, look at the German DAX. The German DAX is lingering at the bottom, so that certainly isn't a good sign. So political uncertainty, concerns regarding Merkel's future, etc., etc., the, the direct future direction of Germany, so, so on and so forth, it doesn't bode well. As you can see here, 60-minute chart. Compare a 500-point rally uh, to the uh, German DAX. It doesn't compare at all. Okay, so again, isn't a good sign. Okay.
10 minute chart as you can see here we've got tire but it looks like it's got going to close very quickly and it certainly remains vulnerable yesterday you could see selling into the close and it certainly seems like we're certainly witnessing selling into the close so there's a lot of uncertainty a lot of fear there so again that certainly is risk negative in terms of the french character again this is an index look at that folks i mean this is lingering at the bottom it still has yet to close the gap fill at uh, 5030 uh, and then you've got multiple gaps below but again it's lingering that's not certainly isn't a good sign at all from my perspective 60 minute chart look at that weakness okay lingering okay it may well test retest that double bottom and even potentially make a new low that doesn't bode well at all in terms of FTSE 100 now that's slightly different uh, FTSE certainly showing uh, showing strength today as you can see we've bounced off that pivot low at 7100 it hasn't been much it's only 120 point rally so again FTSE certainly is weak as well given the uncertainty of surrounding Brexit as well so again that's another factor so a lot of factors weighing on European indices compared to US uh, infrastructure plan from Mr. Trump, uh, the imbecile, racist, sexual predator, etc., etc. I mean, really, he's, he's the uh, he really is the epitome of a devil, really, isn't he? I mean, that individual. But either way, uh, Devil Trump basically um, uh, unveiling his uh, stimulus plan, which nobody really believes in, uh, is actually going to cause uh, massive amounts of debt. It's no longer fiscal neutral. Okay, so again, that certainly is a concern. Initially, he claimed to be fiscal neutral. He's claimed bankruptcy so many times himself. I mean, he's not, he doesn't care if the uh, American economy or the American consumer goes bankrupt. He already cares about him, himself and his family and playing golf at Mar-a-Lago, etc., etc., where he's already claimed bankruptcy. So, Mr. Bankrupt, uh, sexual predator, Mr. Trump, uh, okay, well, even defending sexual predators last week. Um, now, uh, all of his party is more or less involved in some sort of misdemeanor. But again, uh, in, uh, uh, dimwits think alike, as they say. Uh, and uh, really it's uh, people that lot have severely low IQ um, and uh, psychological problems that generally tend to, to go towards this direction. That's what generally tends to be the case. Either way, uh, obviously he's, 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 he's a proud supporter of white supremacy and Nazism, so it just depends who you want to follow. It's, uh, if you have evil within you, then you'll generally tend to be attracted to evil. If you have goodness within you, you'll be attracted to goodness and positive uh, thinking. Either way, that's uh, that's his motto. That's not our motto, and history will be um, will certainly testify to his uh, insanity. Either way, it's a dark period in uh, in, in, in uh, global politics, in world politics, and even Western politics at the moment. Let's just hope the uh, the situation improves and we get more noble leaders. Uh, okay. Now, either way, uh, that's the status quo. You can see the FTSE uh, 60 minute chart playing out with a bull flag there. Okay. Although oil price is now starting to weigh, bear that in mind. Copper prices were stronger overnight. Uh, and obviously U.S. equities, the uh, FTSE certainly followed U.S. equities higher as well. So bear that in mind, what I mentioned with regards to Europe, certainly lagging on the back of Merkel. FTSE 100, 10-minute chart, we hit a pivot high of 7.222, and we're certainly looking to reverse now. We've gapped higher, 50-odd uh, points, okay? So from my perspective, I mean, it's almost, yeah, 50-odd points, and now from my perspective, we're looking to close the gap, possibly looking to retest this breakout level around the 7.195, possibly even retrace back up to 75.61, or even potentially close the gap at 7170. Certainly don't obviously uh, count that out as well. So all those factors certainly coming into play from my perspective. Certainly looking for a flush lower. Okay, so I think that's a good summation of European equities. Um, certainly sitting on 70 points this week. So slightly impressive, uh, slightly uh, improved on last week's performance. Uh, certainly was negative last week, but we managed to swing it around with a long NASDAQ 200 point trade. So ended up around plus 10, plus 12 for the point for the week. So certainly has been tough uh, 2018 for me uh, to start the year very very volatile markets i mean you know the nasdaq swinging two three hundred points either side the dow's down one thousand points in a day so uh, just better take that into account if you're tra day trader trading with 20 20 30 point stops these moves in the market have literally just wiped you know literally uh, whips all your left right center so certainly a negative start for 2018 this far I'm certainly hoping that uh, the situation improves for now my trade certainly is to look for a potential retracement and look for gap fill below okay on that note please be sure to visit trade signal market uh, signal to market updates from leading providers you can download it at the google app and the apple app store and be sure to visit cfds.com and take advantage of that bonus goodbye now